Very excited to be here with you again. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, um, a project that we've been working recently for the last uh, few years in the Montreal International Airport. Um, who are we? We are GSS. We are a consultancy uh, company, a Canadian company, uh, that we basically work in, in lean design and simulation and optimization for different customers. We have uh, three uh, different uh, focus or axes where we like to specialize, which one of them is airports and aerospace, the other one is healthcare and life science, and the other one is logistics and supply chain. We, we as a consultancy company, we, we, we try to have a holistic uh, vision where we try to focus on, on the human engineering. That's, that's actually part of our logo. We would like to think uh, that we provide solutions to our customers, but always thinking uh, in the human aspect, uh, either uh, the passengers in an airport or nurses and, and patients and doctors, if we are talking about hospitals, and of course, uh, all the human resources that are involved in any manufacturing and production system. Uh, uh, for that matter, we have two centers of excellence. One of them is the Center of Excellence in Continuous Improvement. We have a, a good team of uh, black belt and green belt uh, specialists that work in hand uh, with our customers in order to capture uh, their needs and, 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 and you know, to hear their voice and to try to, to develop solutions together with them. Uh, the other one is the Center of Excellence in Predictive Technologies, which I have the, the privilege to lead uh, for the last two years. Uh, so we have a large list of customers, including hospitals, airports, uh, manufacturing companies, and, and one of the, like, I will say, the, one of our oldest customers, and the one we have a, a good uh, relationship in terms of partnership, is the uh, Montreal International Airport. Uh, for, we've been working with them for the last, uh, GSS has been involved in projects with them for the last 12 years. Uh, so Montreal International Airport is a very large uh, and important airport in, in North America. It's the number three in Canada, 11th in, in North America. Um, uh, it has a, 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 a very big proportion of international destinations compared with the national destination or domestic destinations. Um, it has, it's one of the most important airports in North America in terms of uh, uh, connections. Um, and lots of European uh, uh, roads come to North America through uh, Montreal. Uh, last year, uh, they reach, they, they passed their goal of 19 million passengers, and they are largely they are going to overpass that goal uh, largely this year. Um, in the last uh, years, I will say the last five years, they've had a. Uh, an enormous uh, growth trend, uh, more than 32%, and they're expecting to have a continuous uh, growing trend of more than 4% for the next uh, following years. It means that if we see this uh, in, in, in a larger view, uh, in a matter of 10 years, they will duplicate uh, their demand. So duplicating the demand with the same install capacity has certain challenges. One of them is that uh, they need to grow and they need to adapt. So for that matter, uh, Montreal Airport uh, launched since the last uh, few years uh, lots of infrastructure uh, projects in order to uh, expand and extend their facilities. And this is for passengers, for bag systems, uh, and, and for all the, the su support uh, services that they have. Uh, so um, one of the dreams uh, that, that we've been trying to build with the airport of Montreal for the last years is to, is to focus on digital twins. Uh, we, uh, I will say that one of the oldest platforms in terms of simulation for the airport is uh, the baggage handling system. And we started with a small loop of the baggage handling system, then we, we, we grew to a specific subsectors and sections, and now we have, uh, we, we got to a point where we have the model, uh, uh, the full uh, baggage handling system in, in, in different simulation models. Now, uh, what feeds these models is historical information that we translate into a specific uh, arriving profiles. But where we are trying to go with all this project is to have a full digital twin uh, approach, and, and we are very close to get to that goal. Uh, let me give you an analogy with, uh, with, with this picture. What you see here is a, is a, is a, is a traffic jam, it's a gridlock, and, and this is the result of, uh, well, in this case, it's a, it's a very obvious result because you have lots of, uh, of traffic lanes arriving at the same time with a high volume uh, to a specific point, and then they converge to a smaller uh, lane, 
uh, which cause uh, uh, in, in a cascade effect a uh, full gridlock, right? So this case is very obvious because there are parallel lines, right? But we are, when we are seeing this in a, in a, in a non-linear approach or non-parallel uh, flow lines, uh, like for instance in baggage handling systems, uh, what we have is uh, mm, that these events cannot be easily predict unless you have uh, good uh, analytic and simulation platforms in place to overcome these problems with search and anticipation. Now, seeing the baggage handling system, and this is a very, very, very simple view of what a, a BHS is, which is a baggage handling system, is just a, a, a series of connected subsystems where the first one is uh, uh, the, the infeed where passengers put their baggage, and then there is a, there's a full network of connect, connected conveyors and, 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 and trays that feeds the EDS, which is the explosive detective system, and then once the, the bag is cleared, it's been sent to the outfit, which an outfit is basically uh, just a series of conveyors and carousels where the bags are stored till the moment of the departure of the airplane. Right, and, 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 and the bags are transported through the ULDs, which are the small cars you see in that picture, uh, to the airplanes. Now, the thing here is that there is a limited capacity, the limited uh, number of uh, conveyors and carousels. So how do we deal with that? How, how do we manage the fact that lots of, the, the, there's certain limit, but the demand has certain fluctuations? Uh, and let's see this from the business challenge perspective. Each airport, and this, in this case, uh, is, is specifically for the departure flights, it has a specific peak, uh, a concentration of concurrent flights that wants to depart at a certain hour. Uh, this is not a decision, or arbitrary decision of the airport. This is actually uh, the result of the demand through the airlines, that once all of them depart at the same time. However, the rules of allocation for the infrastructures are a specific, like, like very rigid rules of allocation. Let's say, uh, depending on the destination, the size of the airplanes, and many other conditions, uh, uh, three hours, four hours, five hours will be allocated for one specific airplane. Uh, now, for during that time, the carousel or the pier will be allocated specifically for, uh, specifically for that airplane. But if you have a limited amount of airplane of, of piers and carousels, then you cannot accommodate more planes. Let's say in this case, you have that red line uh, that will indicate what's, what's your maximum quota, but your demand wants to go higher than that. So the obvious solution in this case is to build more carousels. So build, uh, increase your infrastructure. And as I said at the beginning, uh, the, the airport is already on uh, with several infrastructure projects that will come in a, in, in 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 different time frames of of the next uh, ten years. Uh, they will have they already have specific milestones of what they will be achieving. However, the demand increase is already a need. So how do we deal with that? So here's where the innovative solutions comes. So what. The, Airports already defined and decided that they want to build an early bag storage or an EBS. What an early bag storage is basically a centralized automated storage where baggage that arise before the opening of this infrastructure, the, the pier that we mentioned at the beginning, uh, are sent to. Let's say uh, you have a flight to New York at 6 p.m., but you end up your meetings at noon. So you decide to go to the airport at noon uh, you check in your luggage, and then you go for a lunch. So that luggage uh, that will be sent in the air, 6 p.m. airplane uh, will be sent to a centralized repository. Sometimes it's sent to the pier, it's just set aside. But most of the cases, they are sent to a specific centralized repository till the moment where the pier is open, let's say at 4 p.m. So at 4 p.m., the bag is sent again to the pier, and then it's sent to the airplane. That's pretty much how it works. And most airports in the world now are moving towards that direction. So having these centralized parking lots where the bag stays before the pier opens. So Montreal Airport decided that they want to build this specific uh, infrastructure. Now, there is a huge amount uh, involved in this investment. Uh, uh, however, it's not going to be utilized during the whole day. It will have a specific peaks. So we said, why don't we use this EBS, this early bag storage infrastructure, in order to accommodate more bags 
uh, by doing something that we call the peak shaving. What a peak shaving is, basically just shorten a little bit the allocation of a specific flights in order to accommodate more planes into the same uh, infrastructure. How do we get to this solution? Well, we do, as, I, as, I, as we said begin, at the beginning, uh, lots of uh, lean, lean, lean design uh, 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 workshop with the, our customers. So we sat with each one of the stakeholders around the table, airlines, uh, with the airports, uh, infrastructures, and operations, and planning departments, as well as the back handling uh, operator. Uh, and we tried to get to a solutions that could fit the increase of demand with the operational constraints. Now, what do we also know is that this solution needs to be done in the short term. However, we know that infrastructure-wise, it will be done just in two years. So how do we deal with that in the next two years? Well, we have a temporary solution, which is, and again, this was a solution that came out from the same customers. It's like, let's do first a manual implementation. So, just a, a quick reminder what, what this uh, peak shaving methodology means. Let's say this example where you have three piers and 11 flags. 10 of them were already accommodated. But you have the flag number, the, the 11, which is the black one you see on the bottom of the screen, that needs to be accommodated, but there's no space. So what do we do? You start saying, well, what if I move it here, we put it there? Of course, the most simple solution is build a fourth pier and put it there. Again, infrastructure-wise, increase, uh, increase the risk here. So. If we check what's the profile arrival of the bag's arrival of each one of the flights, you realize that the flight number six may be cut, let's say, one extra hour. So if you cut it one hour, you may reduce the time, and then you can move the flight number two from pier one to pier two. At that moment, you open a slot where you can put the flight number 11, right? So this is simple when you see 11 flights on three piers. But when you have thousands of flights throughout a week, with hundreds of peers, this becomes a very large number of combination, and of course, the complexity level increases a lot. Uh, so you need something that can, so what do we do? We need to develop a solution that can solve complex uh, interactions like this, that can be automated and can be, can be flexible, quick, and easy to manage by the users. So here's when we came up with AnyLogic. So why do we choose AnyLogic? Because it simplifies the complex modeling, uh, and, and again, as I explained, this is a very complex operation that requires several inputs and several uh, uh, combinations. Um, we, we actually got benefits from um, using the process modeling and the material handling library. And I, I, I will have to say that the last year when the material handling library was released for us, that was a, a, an amazing achievement because before we were using only process model, modeling for doing this and it was very, very hard for us to model it specifically for all the conveyors. So kudos to the team, good job. And also uh, uh, the flexibility of the software. We can see this from a very high level if we want to model a specific just uh, generic approaches in terms of logic, control logic, or if we want to go with specific low level decisions, we can use in logic for, for, the, for the big one to the small steps. Uh, we integrated, as, as you all know, with the databases, Excel files, and we also use a lot of R. So R is something that we uh, bring a lot and integrate with Analogic quite often, mostly for the profile of the bag's arrival. Uh, of course, we automated this uh, to have uh, these reports like what if decision analysis in a very rapid manner. We have this in three models or three steps. The first one is pretty much all the bags profiling uh, and all the smart decisions where all the combinations are, are, are evaluated. So we, this model is already in place. The second phase is the, the physical test uh, or the physical approach, which is the one that is currently in place in, in, in the airport. And is the way how an early bag storage is managed by using people who manage the bags and put them in, into carts, mimicking or, or, or imitating what, replicating what this automated early bag storage will do in a couple of years when it's uh, uh, implemented. And the phase number three, which is the model that we're currently developing with the airport, uh, is the one that is a fully automated uh, system 
full of conveyors that will be connected to the system that we already have for the, for the uh, baggage handling system. Uh, so what are the benefits of this? First of all, it's a, it's a, it's a team solution. It's a community team solution. Everyone about, around the table participated in this solution. And, and we are very happy and proud of this because if we don't have the buy-in of all the participants, the project will fail. Uh, the service level is maintained. So far, the computer simulations as well as the physical simulation has proven that we can keep maintaining the same level uh, dealing with this increase in demand. Number four, uh, number three, the cost savings. Uh, just, just if we had to uh, build all these carousels and piers right away, uh, several million dollars will have to be invested right away. Now, we are saving and, and, and delaying a little bit these investments in order to go with the expansion project of the airport. And of course, we are, we're, we're getting the benefits of the cost of poor quality, which is eliminating operational contingency plans, reducing safety of risk, better use of resource, and reduction of supplementary hours. Uh, as I say, we have three models. We, uh, the, the, the first one is, is the one on top. Unfortunately, there's lots of sensitivity information in each one of these models. Uh, so uh, we, we got to manage a, um, an agreement with the airport to present only the, the second one, which is the manual uh, model. Uh, in the first one, uh, as you can see, is all the possible combinations are being evaluated considering the, 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 all the bags profiling and, and, and the, the different time frame that can be cut each one of the planes uh, in order to accommodate more flights, considering also the operational uh, constraints. The second one is a specific human manipulation of the, of the, um, of the bag, early bag storage, and the third one is the one that is the full um, uh, automated integration. So let's see a uh, let's see a demo of the model. So as I said, this is the model number two. So in this model, uh, we take the output that comes from the first model. So uh, the first model was the one that evaluated all the possible combinations and came out with one specific scenario that would say, well, this is the one that fits better considering the, all the bags profile arrival and the operational constraint. The, this, in this model, we're just using human beings to move the boxes and to re-inject the, the bags to the system once is the time uh, of the opening of the pier. So as you see here, this is just a, 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 a very, very small segment of the, of the baggage handling system where you see just the, out, the last part of the outfit. Uh, each one of these cards is uh, specific, uh, dedicated to one flight or to a specific uh, aggregation of flights. And uh, as soon as the bags arrive, uh, they are sent to the cards. They are they're, they're stored in a, in, a, in a separate area. And then they are sent, once the period is open, to another part of the, of the system to be re-injected. Uh, this is pretty much just the dashboard where we evaluated what was the impact in terms of uh, um, resource utilization, uh, the number of physical spaces that we needed, and as well as the number of laid backs that we may have, because we were also considering those, uh, uh, th that was actually one of the quality parameters of the model. Um, of course, there was a limited number of cards, limited numbers of spaces, so this, of course, had to be considered as part of the scenarios that we analyzed. Uh, model number three is the one that we are currently implementing, but uh, how, uh, unfortunately, it's very surprising, but unfortunately, we cannot present that one today. Uh, and I will think that's the time we have so far. Thank you.